Do you want a convenient way to back up your files and access them from any device on your network? Perhaps you want to host your own cloud storage, your own media server, or maybe you want to host a Minecraft server for you and your friends. In this video, I'm going to show you an easy and fairly universal way of turning an old computer into a home server or NAS using DietPy, which is actually just Debian with custom software on top. The main reason I'm using DietPy is because it's lightweight, easy to use, doesn't require more than one hard drive, and it can basically run on anything. Not just regular x86 PCs, but also single board computers. In fact, my home server is actually just a single board computer running Diet Pi. But before I start, I want to clarify this is not an in-depth video about how to build the fastest or most power efficient home server. There are a lot of topics I could cover, but I feel they're worth their own videos. This is just meant to be an easy way of making a basic home server by repurposing an old computer. So for the hardware, I'm using a ThinkPad X220, which has a Core i5-2520M, 8GB of RAM, and two SSDs. But for simplicity, I'm only using one of them, as I'm going to assume your computer only has one drive. For this tutorial, we'll need a USB flash drive, an Ethernet cable, and access to another computer. So the first thing you want to do is open your browser of choice and head over to dietpy.com. Select PC slash VM, and then select Native PC BIOS or Native PC UEFI. If you've got a relatively modern computer, choose UEFI. If you have a very old machine, or you're not sure if your computer supports UEFI, then choose BIOS. Then download the installer image. I'm going to be flashing my USB from the terminal, but I'd recommend most of you just use Berlin Etcher for simplicity. Once the image is downloaded, we'll need to extract it as it comes in a zipped folder. Next, plug the USB into your computer. If you're using Berlin Etcher, simply select the ISO, select the USB you want to write the ISO to, click flash, and wait for it to complete. On a Linux terminal, navigate to the directory where the ISO is located. Type lsblk to list the storage devices connected to your computer. In my case, I can tell devsda is my USB because of the storage capacity. Then type sudo ddif equals, then write the name of the ISO. Then type of equals and the name of the drive. And then status equals progress. This last part is optional, but I find it to be very useful. Before writing to the USB, make sure any important files in it are backed up elsewhere, as writing the ISO to the USB will format the drive and delete all the files on it. Once completed, plug the USB into the old computer and connect the computer to your switch or router using an Ethernet cable. You can set up Wi Fi after the installation, but I don't recommend it. Also, if you're using a laptop, I'd suggest plugging it in just in case the battery runs out during installation. Next, start up your computer and pull up the boot menu. On this ThinkPad is the Think Vantage button and then F12. On your computer, it'll most likely be Escape or one of the function keys, and it will usually say which key it is on startup. Then select the boot device and wait for the installer to load. Once loaded, simply select the drive and then just wait for the computer to restart and then remove the USB. That's it, basically. Your computer should just boot into DietPy, but if it doesn't, it's most likely because the boot order is wrong. So check that out if it seems to be a problem. If successful, you should arrive at a black screen that has an IP address listed. For me, that's 192.168.0.100. The next step is to log in. You can either log in directly on the server, or you can log in using another computer on the network, as SSH is already set up. So I'm going to go back to my main computer, open a terminal and type ssh root at and then the IP address. Press enter, type yes and then type the password, which by default is dietpy. The system will then update, ask if you want to participate in the survey, I'm going to say no, and then you'll be asked if you want to change the default passwords, and I would recommend doing so. It will then ask if you want to enable a serial slash UART console, for most people, it doesn't really matter which option you choose. Then you'll be brought to this screen, which is a program called DietPy Software. Now you can go ahead and install the applications you want. For now, I'm just going to install Netscloud and Samba Server. The first time you install a program that has a web portal, you'll be asked to pick a web server. I personally like to use Nginx because it's the one I'm most familiar with. So, what are these programs I'm installing? Well, Nextcloud is kind of like a self-host alternative to Google Drive or Dropbox, but since it has a lot of extensions, you can basically make a full ecosystem out of it. You can also make new user accounts, which is useful for business, 
or maybe you just want to treat your friends and family to some free cloud storage. Once Nextcloud is installed, open your browser and type the server IP address followed by forward slash Nextcloud. The username is admin, and the password is the password you set earlier. You can also access Nextcloud on your phone by downloading the mobile app. Samba is a network file share protocol. Essentially, it allows us to access a folder on this server through a file manager on another computer. The default shared folder is MNT Diet User Data. The default username is DietPy, and the default password is the one you set earlier. Here's how you access a Samba file share on Linux. And here's how you access it on Windows. Before I end the video, there are a few things I just want to mention. Firstly, if you're not sure how to use something, DietPy have documentation for the programs within DietPy software. Secondly, if a program isn't listed in DietPy software, that doesn't mean you can't install it. Since DietPy is just a fork of Debian, there's nothing stopping you from installing programs using apt. Thirdly, DietPy also has a web interface if you want to manage the server from browser rather than the terminal. It's not installed by default because it's still in beta, but after installing it, the default port is 5252, and the password is the same one you set earlier. If you're using a laptop, you'll probably want the ability to close the lid and not have the laptop go to sleep. To do this, edit the file etc systemd logindconf. Uncomment the line that says handle lid switch and change the value from suspend to ignore and then save the file. In future videos, I'm going to show things like how you can access your server over the internet and I'll show other things like how to set up a music or Minecraft server. But for now, thank you all for watching and until next time, cheerio.